What is up folks? So I thought I should do today's video with me so on my lap. Can you see her? She's trying to fall asleep on my lap. But uh, yeah, let's begin. I must also mention that this is the last video on this channel for the year. <laughs> Conveniently on the last day of the year. But hope you've had a wonderful year. I've had a wonderful year in many ways. Um, and a not so great year in many other ways. But yeah, looking forward to next year. I'm loving the journey that I'm on and uh, hopefully things will turn out well next year. Wish you the same. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. A really interesting video from Hack Green. And I thought I should play it here. This is not a pseudoscience video. Instead, what it is, is a video that describes the dangers of alternative medicine. How People hear about other people saying great things about alternative medicine, which are usually exaggerated. And because it's someone's account of something, someone's opinion of something, it's going to be biased. It's heavily anecdotal and people make light for their decisions based on what they've heard. Let's hear it out. I'm kind of obsessed with looking into the stories of people who have cured their cancer naturally. Every single story I have looked into like this starts out the same way. They get diagnosed with cancer, they go to a doctor, and they do the thing that the doctor tells them to do. They do By the way, the reason Handreen is so interested in uh, cancer and stuff is because he got diagnosed recently, I believe with a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma a cancer. He's gone through the treatment and his outcomes are really, uh, really good. But in the process, he's learned a lot about cancer. And if you go to his channel or the Vlog Brothers channel, you will see a lot of content on cancer, like educational content on cancer. And this, is a recent reel, which I think is very important. Do first line cancer treatment. They have surgery and sometimes they have chemo and radiation. And if you look into it, the chances that that first line cancer treatment is curative, that it completely eliminates their cancer and they will not relapse, is somewhere on the order of like 30 to 60%. So like they have a good chance after that first line therapy that their cancer will not come back. And then the doctor says to them, we should do what's called adjuvant chemotherapy. We should do extra chemo because that's gonna increase the chances that you won't relapse from like 30% to 50% or from 60% to 70%. They've done the research. There's a lot of evidence making it clear what the right course of action is. And the doctor says to them, this is what we should do. We should do chemo for six months and that's gonna increase the chances that you will live a long and healthy life. And then the person says, no, like they don't wanna do chemo. They've already done chemo. They know how bad it is. They've seen other people go through chemo, maybe in a very different situation that they are in, but they've seen other people do chemo and they're like, I don't wanna do that. And they're scared and it sucks and I get that. And then they find a group of people on the internet who say, no, you're not scared, you're brave. And so with your bravery, what you need to do is you need to take this into your own hands and cure your own cancer with alternative therapies that are much less scary than chemotherapy. And then they get lucky. So they, they turn out to have been in the 50% of people for whom the first line treatment was enough to cure the cancer, not in the 50% of people for whom it would not be, and not in the 20% of people for whom that adjuvant chemotherapy would have saved them. What we know is that if you run this experiment 10 times, then like all these people decide to not get their adjuvant chemotherapy, five of them will survive and five of them will die and two of them will die when they didn't have to. But that's not how it feels to the person who did the alternative treatments. How it feels to them is that their doctor like freaked out on them when they said they weren't gonna do this extra chemotherapy. They were like, you have to do this. My job is to increase your chances of surviving this cancer and you're not doing it. I don't know why you wouldn't do this. They freaked out on them and then the person is like, okay, I'm gonna take it into my own hands. And they invariably, and these stories sort of get more and more inflated as time goes on and they get more social clout in their community and oftentimes are being rewarded financially for telling particular stories. It goes from, you know, I did first line treatment and then I did alternative therapies to I, like, I just leave out that part where I talk about how I got chemo first. I got surgery first. Or you tell the story where, you know, everybody said that there's a 0% chance that surgery alone would cure it, where if you look at the state of cancer that they had and the kind of cancer they had, that's just not true. Every time I have looked into a story like this, that's been the story, that they got 
evidence-based first-line cancer treatment that had a potential for cure, but then didn't do some other suggested therapy that would have increased their chances of not relapsing. And then they tell people that the reason they, they are cancer-free is all of the stuff that they did, all the diet and the coffee enemas or whatever it is that they did. And then they sell books about it. And then people read those books and they decide to not do the evidence-based first-line cancer treatment that the person did, and then they die. Or they have a more severe disease and then they die. Or they get unlucky and then they die. I find this frustrating. Uh, I feel like these people know that they had a good chance of being cured and that the initial evidence-based treatment is the thing that did the most work. Like, I'm not saying that no nothing does nothing. I think it's great to have a healthy diet, especially when you're doing cancer treatment. It's very difficult to have a healthy diet when you're doing cancer treatment. Like, it's a good thing to do. But I, just, I feel like, I don't know, like, it's very easy to believe something that when it brings you a lot of attention and money and social standing in a community that supports you. So I get. I guess I I should try to be empathetic in that way. But like, them selling their stories to people who are harmed by them, uh, makes me pretty mad. Yeah, if Hank Green ever comes across this video, I'm so sorry for having played your entire video. Uh, I didn't mean to steal your uh, content, but uh, I think I should comment on this. That's why I played the whole video because I think he said everything better than. I could have ever made those points. What I wanted to say was the best example of exactly what he said. Someone who had a curable form of cancer, who opted instead of first line treatments, opted instead to go for alternative therapies and ended up dying. That example is Steve Jobs, the great visionary of Apple. If he was still alive, imagine what new Apple products we might have had. It doesn't matter how great, how famous, how rich you are. In the end, cancer comes for all of us. Don't make stupid decisions based on hearsay from someone who's looking for clout, who's looking for social standing, who's looking for fame and money and wrote some book. Look for first-line therapies that have evidence base for them and make your decisions using that. साइंस भी मानती है इस चीज को साइंस प्रूफ कर चुकी है एक लेडी खाना बनाते समय जो बोलेगी इवन आप चाय में चीनी घोल रहे हो ना उस समय भी जो आप सोच रहे हो वो भी आपके उस खाने में ट्रांसफर हो रहा है I think she's trying to talk about how water has memory and feelings and it imbibes whatever you're feeling the closest experimental demonstration of this is in a flawed experiment and a flawed paper written in a book by a guy called Masaru Emoto where he did some experiment that proved water had feelings, had memory, all these things. That is what people use to claim that water memory is something science has proven. No, there is no scientific evidence for water having memory. All the documentaries, I'm sure I've gotten lots of comments against this. There are three main names that come to my mind when, when I hear water memory. Three people who did some really flawed research trying to prove that water has memory. Those are Jack Benveniste, uh, Luke Montagnier, uh, those two are French and Masaru Emoto. There are documentaries on this, there are papers published on what they did. They're all flawed, there is no evidence strong evidence, any evidence I should say, that water has memory. So whatever she's about to say is some bullshit. So yeah, take what she's saying with a pinch of salt. एग्जाम के लिए जा रहा होता है तो उसकी मम्मी सुबह सुबह दूध पिलाती है कंप्लेन डाल के और उसको घोलेगी अब घोलते घोलते वो सोच सोच क्या रही होती है पढ़ा तो कुछ है नहीं साल भर फेल होगा ये तो पक्का कम नंबर लाएगा अब वो क्या सोच रही है कि वो बस उसमें कंप्लेन मिला रही है बट वो कंप्लेन नहीं मिला रही वो अपने सारे थॉट्स उसमें मिला रही है अब वो थॉट्स जब वो बच्चा पिएगा तो वो धीरे धीरे उसके एनर्जी को भी बदलेगा उसकी एनर्जी भी ट्रांसफर होगी इसलिए हमारे आध्यात्मिक मार्ग में भोजन बनाना खाना बनाना ये एक प्रकार की पूजा है ये नहीं कि कान में कुछ भी लगा लिया और उल्टा सीधा दे हैव टू प्लग देयर ओन फिलॉसफी देयर ओन आइडियोलॉजी व्हाटएवर सो आई थिंक वी हैव सीन इनफ ऑफ दिस फाइनली हम जीत गए 
एक लीगल नोटिस और आठ महीनों के बाद बॉन्डविटा ने अपना शुगर कम कर दिया लेकिन ये हुआ कैसे अप्रैल फर्स्ट को मैंने बॉन्डविटा के शुगर के खिलाफ वीडियो बनाया द टैगलाइन इज तैयारी जीत की बट आई थिंक द टैगलाइन शुड बी तैयारी डायबिटीज की ये वीडियो बहुत वायरल हुआ और करोड़ों लोग ने ये वीडियो देखा फिर बॉन्डविटा ने मुझे लीगल नोटिस भेजा वीडियो हटवाने के लिए और कहा की मेरा वीडियो साइंटिफिक नहीं है और फिर इंडिया के लीडिंग डॉक्टर्स और न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट ने एक डॉक्यूमेंट साइन किया और बोले की मेरा वीडियो बिल्कुल साइंटिफिक है अप्रैल बिग Y'all can pause this video and go back and play that again and see if in that notice they say anywhere that the video is scientific. We'll continue watching. में कैडबरी ने मुझे लीगल नोटिस भेजा और अप्रैल एंड में गवर्नमेंट ने कैडबरी को लीगल नोटिस भेजा अपने गलत पैकेजिंग को हटाने के लिए आठ महीने हो गए और आज भी बॉनविटा का इंस्टाग्राम में कमेंट सेक्शन ऑफ है और फाइनली हम आज जीत गए बॉनविटा ने एक नया प्रोडक्ट लॉन्च किया जिसमें एडिड शुगर पंद्रह कम है बॉनविटा के पास केवल लॉयर्स की शक्ति है लेकिन हमारे पास सच्चाई की शक्ति जनता की शक्ति तन की शक्ति और मन की शक्ति भी है भारत के एक करोड़ लोग में अगर एक करोड़ लोग भी बॉनविटा पीते हैं तो आज से वो 15% कम शुगर पिएंगे। सिर्फ एक वीडियो ने 15% शुगर कम कर दिया अगर हम सब फूड लेबल पढ़ने लग जाएं, तो बाकी सारे कंपनीज को अपने प्रोडक्ट्स को सुधारना ही पड़ेगा मैं बाकी सारे फूड कंपनीज को रिमाइंड कर रहा हूं आपके पास तीन ऑप्शन हैं। पहला ऑप्शन कि आप प्रोडक्ट को सुधारो दूसरा ऑप्शन आप मार्केटिंग को सुधारो और तीसरा ऑप्शन मुझे लीगल नोटिस भेजो और अगर आप तीसरा ऑप्शन चुनेंगे तो याद रखिएगा अगर आप मुझे लीगल नोटिस भेजोगे मैं आपको पब्लिक में नोटिस कराऊंगा So my comments on this is that one his Bon Vita video was a good thing. Bon Vita apart from having a lot of sugar made a lot of claims in its packaging. It said uh, improves immunity, uh, improves growth, your child will become taller, all sorts of claims that have no evidential basis for them. Clearly it's a good thing that those claims were done away with in this new packaging. But sugar is not the problem sugar is something that you can consume not regularly not as a habit not in excess but having sugar is absolutely fine if you are in an otherwise balanced and calorie controlled diet additional calories excess calories is what can harm you can give you heart disease can make you put on weight not having sugar If you have excess sugar yes of course you are having excess calories but it's the calories that are a problem these calories can come from anything not just sugar come from anything that has calories even brown rice even otherwise healthy foods like a uh, you know lean meat or uh, whole wheat 100% whole wheat bread fruits veg the thing is excess sugar is a form of calories that's easy to consume in excess so yeah bottom line it's the excess calories that you should watch not just excess sugar you can have a pastry a cake a sweet donut chocolates if you want but if you are otherwise eating a balanced diet that's calorie controlled you don't have to worry food farmers whole video is un- is using this premise of sugar is a bad thing that's not true at all and uh, bonvita reducing their sugar the amount of sugar in their uh, product hasn't done anything them making unscientific claims is what you should be worried about now in a way i think what he's doing is spreading a kind of panic among his audience a kind of thinking where people just tend to avoid sugar yeah that's what i want to say about this i'll end the video here i'll see you in the next one